Okay, our first letter is A. You want to start in the middle at the top and draw a diagonal to the lower left. You're going to go back to the top, draw a diagonal to the lower right. Then you're going to do your cross piece below the center line. <clears throat> All right, for your B, you're going to draw a vertical line down the left-hand side of the square. You're actually going to make what looks like an L after that. Then you're going to make what would look like an E, if you're going to do that, right in the middle. Then you're going to connect them. Top of the B, actually is a little bit above the halfway mark, and the bottom of the B goes almost all the way across the square. Again, you want the bottom to feel bottom weighted. All right. For our C, we're actually going to do half of a circle. So on the left-hand side, we're going to draw a semicircle. Try to make it as round looking as you can. And then you will finish out the bottom. It carries over almost all the way across the square, and then you can finish out the top portion. As you see, it should look very round, like part of a circle. Okay, we'll do our D. You're going to do a vertical line down the left-hand side of your square. Create an L. Go back up to the top of your D, and you want to carry that round portion of the D almost all the way across the square, and then curl back into the L. The reason why we create an L on the B and the D is so that we make it look flat and based on this line. A lot of times when we do our Bs and our Ds, they just kind of come down to this point and it doesn't feel as substantial. All right. For our E, we're going to draw a vertical line down the left-hand side of the square. We're going to create a long L that goes almost all the way across the bottom of the square. The midway point, we'll do an, uh, the dash from the center. And then for our final part of the E, we want this part of the E to be further out than the middle part, but not as far out as the bottom part. And I call this like a bouncy ball test. If I had a little bouncy ball floating right up here, I should be able to drop it straight down, miss the top of the E, but hit that bottom portion of the E. Okay, we're going to do our F. Going to do a vertical down on the left hand side of the square, exactly like an E. We're going to do the middle part and then the top part. All right. Does anybody need more time? Are we good? All right, let's keep rolling. The G starts out just like the C did. You're trying to make half of a circle. So focus when you start at the top, go over to the left and come back down to the bottom. You want that to look like half of a circle. We'll finish out this portion of the G a little bit, but we're going to leave it blank. So we're going to get it to curl back up, but just leave that blank for now. And then just make it look like a C up at the top. Now the G is very interesting. Okay, it's not like a normal G. We're going to draw a flat portion on the front and then pull over in the middle. Your G should look like it has this flat portion right here on the front. Okay. All right, our H is next. Super duper simple. Two vertical lines. The first one's going to be on the left-hand side of the square. The next vertical is going to be almost all the way across to the right-hand side of the square, but not quite. And then we're going to do the middle cross piece in line with the cross piece of the A. Okay, so that's below the center mark. Again, that gives it a bottom-weighted feeling that makes it more substantial. <clears throat> For the I... It's very simple. Okay, you're just going to draw a line straight down. All right. The J is kind of interesting. It's actually half of a U. Okay, so the J and the U are in basically the same thing. We're going to go over almost all the way to the right side of the square. 
We're going to draw four squares down. I don't know if you can tell, but these are six by six squares. We're going to draw straight down here, and we're going to do basically just a smiley face right there. It's really weird, but it has like a little pointiness to it right there. Okay. Now the K is my favorite. All right. We're going to do a vertical line down the left-hand side. And then we're going to draw what looks like a tipped over T. Okay. Our tipped over T is going to start up here at the top, almost all the way across the square. And we're going to go on a diagonal down that ends up below the halfway point of our vertical line that we drew. And then right through the middle, we're going to draw another diagonal down to the far right corner of our square. Okay, when you're done, it should look like the letter I with a T that got tipped over. You get this really awkward space in here that's it's very unique to the K. Okay, most of the time when we draw a K, it doesn't look like that. But in Draftsman Letter, this makes it feel very substantial. Okay, our L is very simple. You can go ahead and do that with your vertical line down and your horizontal line across at the bottom. All right, now the M, the M is actually wider than the H, but they start the same way. You're going to do two vertical lines. This time, one will be on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, it will go down there, okay? The way I do this when I'm going nice and slow like we're going now is I actually put a dot down at the bottom in the middle. So I've got those two vertical elements with a dot down at the bottom, and then I just connect the dots the two diagonals that go all the way down. Okay, we're on our end, we're gonna do two verticals, this time just like we did with the H. So the first one's on the left-hand side, the one on the right is about five squares over, five little squares over. And then we're just gonna connect the two of the diagonal. All right, now we're to O and we want that to look like a perfect circle. We're gonna do it in two halves. Do the first half on the left-hand side and the second half on the right-hand side, okay? Eventually, you will become comfortable doing that with one motion, but what we're trying to do, the reason why we're doing it in two halves right now is to make it look and feel more circular. So we're kind of forcing ourselves to think about how round it is instead of just drawing it really quick. All right, our P, we're going to do a vertical down the left-hand side. We're going to make this a lot like the beginning of an F with the cross piece right here to the middle. Then we're going to go up at the top, curve it back around when we get almost all the way to the right hand side. And there's our P. All right. Our Q is starts as an O. So again, we're going to draw it in two halves, a semicircle to the left, a semicircle to the right, and then a diagonal down in the lower right hand corner. You probably noticed that the R and the P are pretty much identical. So we're going to draw a vertical line down the left-hand side. Start this off kind of like an F with the cross piece. And go back up to the top. Go almost all the way to the right. Curl around. And here on the R, it's very important that you notice that we start right in the center of this box and bring your diagonal down. You don't have this, just like the K has a little bit of a gap in here, you want to do the same thing with your R. That makes it feel stronger. Okay. The S uh, is what well, we want to make sure. It, it's hard because we haven't done the 8 yet, but the 8 and the S are related. They actually have a very similar process to them uh, as far as stylized. But we're going to start right here. We're going to curl the top portion around. We almost go perfectly level at the middle, but we got to make sure that the bottom half gets wider than the top half and then comes back over wider. So side to side, the bottom of the S is wider than the top portion. I think S is probably one of the tougher ones to learn early on because you have to really pay attention to that and you're kind of curving the lines around. 
T is really easy, vertical down the middle, horizontal across the top. We're going to cover the whole square with that vertical, or I mean with the horizontal piece. A U is just like a, a J. So we're going to do a vertical down the left side, a vertical down the right side, but we're going to stop them a little bit short of the bottom and draw a smiley face in between them. All right, our V, when we're doing this early on, I just put a dot up at the two, two dots up in the upper left and upper right hand corner and a dot down in the middle and then connect the dots. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. All right, our W, this one I would like you to do this. Put three dots across the top, one on the left hand side, one in the middle and one on the right. Look at the first two dots you drew and drop straight down in the middle of both of them. Put a dot at the bottom. Do the same thing up at the top. Look at the space between the second and third dot you drew. Bring a dot down in the middle at the bottom. And then you just play connect the dots. The reason why we do that is we want these to look really symmetrical. If you don't do that early on, you tend to have one side of your W wider than the other. And that's kind of, that's the goal is to not do that in draftsman lettering. Okay. Symmetry is a part of architecture and we sort of try to honor that with our lettering. Okay. Our X. Now, most people, once they get accustomed to doing draftsman lettering, just make an X that fits inside of a square. I really don't have anything against that. But if you want to be a stickler for it, you want the top portion to feel a little bit lighter than the base. And so you would bring your uh, your little dots in at the at, in a little bit from the top. So you could do four dots down at the bottom; they'd be in the corners, and up at the top they would be brought in a little bit. And then you just connect the dots. Again, when you're when you're going fast, it's enough to just make it look like it's sitting in a square. I like the Y a lot as well. You're going to draw a V that's pretty wide. So it starts in the corners, upper corners like that. And then you just bring a little short vertical down here. Right. Our Z follows very much the same uh, dot pattern that our X did. So I'm going to put a couple of dots up at the top and a couple of dots down at the bottom. Again, in practical application, most people just do a Z that would fit inside of a square. and They don't worry too much about making the top look skinnier than the bottom. But, hey, we're trying, we're trying to do this for the first time, and I'd like, like you guys to know it. All right, you guys ready for numerals? Okay, so here we are at our first numeral. It's a zero. It's a semicircle left and a semicircle right. When you're done, it should look just like a circle. Okay. If you want to, you can put a slash through it to distinguish it from the O because that means nil or nothing. You do not have to do that, but you can. All right, a one can be a vertical straight down the middle. And to stop it from being confusing with an I, you can put a little tick mark up at the top. Again, you do not have to. All right, our two is a little bit like a backwards S. We're going to start on the left-hand side, curl over around and down to the bottom left hand corner and then we're going to create the horizontal along the bottom okay our three is a lot like an eight okay our three is a lot like an eight we want the top portion to be smaller than the bottom portion so make sure that the bottom of the three is wider side to side than the top portion, okay? Our four looks like a flag, okay? And the proper way to do a draftsman lettering four is not to leave the top portion open, okay? I know that a lot of us draw our fours with that open. When you're doing draftsman lettering, we do it a little bit differently. We're gonna move over from the center, so we're gonna draw a vertical line just right of center. We're going to draw a diagonal down from there below the center line and then come across. Some people leave their fours like this. I usually give it a little bit of overhang there. All right. 
Our five, we're going to draw a um, vertical line just off of the center, uh, right about here. And we're going to draw a cross piece up at the top. Almost out of time. And the bottom is going to be nice and round all the way. It's going to be wider left to right than the top. All right, the six and the nine are mirrors of each other, uh, vertically speaking. So we're going to start with the six. You're going to draw basically a, it's almost a circle, but it's kind of got a bit of an oval shape to it down at the bottom. And then we're going to curl the top around and over. Okay. Our seven, we'll start with a horizontal that goes about five squares across and then angles back past the center line. Does everybody understand that? The, the center point of your seven or the base of your seven should be off or to the left of center. Okay. All right. Eight. This is one of my favorites. You're going to do a semicircle left and a semicircle right, but they're going to fit like in those first two squares. And then semicircle left and semicircle right in the bottom four. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's finish up before we lose it. All right. Our nine is a mirror of the six. So we're going to draw a big oval that takes up more than the top half. Okay. It's a big oval. And then we're going to come down from the right-hand side and curl under and over to the left. There's your nine. And then our hardest one is the ampersand. Save the hardest one for last. You guys ready? All right. We're going to start at the top, and we're going to curl around and go into a diagonal that goes all the way down to the bottom like that. That's our first mark. It's a little bit like a backward seven, a little bit. We're going to come back up to the top, curl around, and crisscross, and then swoop around like so. All right, this concludes the first portion of Draftsman Lettering. There is one more section for you to complete on your own. Once you're done with that, there are additional activities that you can do to help you with your sizing of your letters and numerals as well as with your spacing thank you so much for watching this video if you would like to print out this activity sheet it is at mrhin.com and there is a link in the description below please be sure to like and subscribe and please also share this with any teachers any homeschooling parents who are looking for activities for their art students thanks so much and have a great day